Good afternoon, my guys, and uh, welcome to our training for today. Um, we're starting way behind time, so we'll do this quickly. So today we're, we're looking, and we're going to be looking at a very interesting, very interesting and powerful trading technique that is being used by a lot of pro traders. Although it's not a pattern which forms often, when it does form, and you know how to trade it properly, you find yourself and uh, you find yourself in a very good trade. As usual, it's important to put out a disclaimer when it comes to forex trading. When it comes to forex trading, there are risks involved, so you want to trade with trading capital and you don't want to put in money you cannot afford to lose, uh, especially as newbie traders. And this is one of the reasons why we've tried to provide you educational materials so that you can become a uh, more efficient at uh, being a good trader. That being said, said I am, as you know, Nana Alvin Alexander. I'm going to be your host. Um, forex trader, a trainer, a very big crypto crypto enthusiast. And I've been in this game for a long time. So let us begin. So today we're looking at head and shoulders. And you probably be wondering what exactly is head and shoulders, what are head and shoulder patterns. I would also look at how we can actually treat the head and shoulder pattern. And then we would find, um, finally wrap it up with a trade idea, a trade bonus trade idea, a kind of, um, you know, which kind of an ideal falls to be a head and shoulder trade pattern which was given in our members area. So let us do this. Now, my favorite quote from Abraham Lincoln, if you had six hours to chop down a tree, you want to spend the first four sharpening your axe. Now, the head and shoulder pattern, I'm going to, I'm going to try and explain it before we go to the chat and try and figure it out. The head and shoulder pattern is a um, forex chart formation that forms where the market, so the market has been making a move in, in a particular direction. So, for example, if the market has been trending, let's say the market has been heading higher, so it has been going or making higher highs and higher lows. And as the market keeps making this move, at some point the market makes a new high. You know, they make another high, and they makes a third high. But these three high are connected by one thing, which is the neckline. The neckline. And I'll, I'll, I'll draw to illustrate this. But when you combine them together, it shows, it, it tends to tell us that the market is about to reverse. So just like you see here, the three main area comp and components of the head and shoulder include the left shoulder. So if you think of the head and shoulder, think of your head, right? So you're from your chest up. So you, you, you think of your left shoulder, right? Then your, your head, you have your left shoulder and your head, which is higher than your left shoulder. Then you have your right shoulder, which is you know same um, length as your head, um, left shoulder, but then it's connected by your neck, right? So the same structure we see the market make that kind of pattern. Um, that's what we call a head and shoulder pattern. There's also an inverse. So there's the opposite of it would be an inverse head and shoulder where this spread is happen in a downtrend. So what I'll do now is I'll escape this and pull up my PowerPoint so I can draw on my chart. So what I'm trying to say then is this. So, so you have the market and the market has been moving, right? So the market has been moving. And then you, the market makes a sh you know, this high and then goes to make another high, which is higher than this previous one. And then makes a new high which is lower than the previous high, but then is you know connected the the the, the base of both the left shoulder and the right shoulder can be connected in a single line, and that's there's a support line holding price up. So you can see this is your left shoulder, this is your head, and this is your right shoulder. So this is a reversal pattern, and if you go to the chart especially when the trend has gone on for quite some time, the market tends to form reversal pattern. And this is one of the reversal patterns you can use to, and that you can find in the, in the, in the forex markets 
And, and the good thing about it is it has a definite um, you know, kind of like trading system way to trade it. The market tends to, to act in specific ways once this pattern has been confirmed. And that's the key word there, confirmed. We'll onto that in a bit. So the inverse head and shoulder is just the, the opposite of the head and shoulder. So in this case, the market has been, will be in the downtrend, right? Okay, so you have the market, the market is in a downtrend. So this has been a downtrend for a while. And then you now have the market make it's a left shoulder, come down, makes a head, stops out, you know, at the neckline, the neckline, and then makes a right shoulder. So you can see this is like head and shoulder, but then in reverse, right? Now, this is a reversal pattern in which we tend to see price head in this direction. Right. So for this one, in this first, in this case here, this is the market has been going up, right, and then makes a left shoulder, make a head, and make a right shoulder, which is which is connected by a neckline, and then we tend to see the market go in this direction. Now the key thing here is this neckline. This neckline is, you know, what really makes it a head and shoulder. Or not. And when it comes to trading specific patterns, like even the harmonic patterns, you want to allow, you want to make sure that the price confirmed. That means the, the price needs to reject from um, it needs to have a the neckline has to be it doesn't it doesn't exact exactly has to be you know precise to the liter, but it doesn't it has to be clear. You know the pattern needs to be clear so that it's uh, before you find yourself trading the wrong setup, right? Now, um, so remember, like I said, the market is in an uptrend, right? It has been going up for a while, and then maybe see, you now start seeing the market slowing down. And next thing you see the market form, do something like this, and then like this. So you can see that this market is in an uptrend, right? This market has been heading high. Then, what makes this pattern a head and shoulder and this one's not is the fact that it is connected, the, the neck, right? So first of all, the left shoulder and the right shoulder needs to be lower than the head. So the left shoulder, the left shoulder and the right shoulder has to be lower than the head for it to be a head and shoulder pattern. But then the neckline here is key because you have to have a support. So this there has to be a support here in which the market, the, the, the left shoulder, you know, rejected from where it bounced off from. And then where the right where the right shoulder starts forming from, you know, they need to be able to, you need to be able to connect it with a single line. And then what would then transpire is if we see the market move below this neckline, we can expect that price would move the same length it moved from the tip of the head to the bottom of the neckline. So that means from here, from the tip of the right shoulder, we can expect that the market to move the same length, right? So this length, this length here, this whole length here would be equal to this length here. Now, once you have a measured objective like this, you can start, you can look to, you know, plan your trade. It makes your trade easy. You have direction. You know the market is heading in this direction. You have exit for loss. You have exit for profits. You have your target, which would be a measured objective. And then your exit for loss, which is something I'll talk about soon now. When I look at how we trade this pattern, ideally is above the um, right shoulder. So let me quickly look at how we can trade this pattern and then I'll go to the chart and then I'll look at some we'll look at um, it's in detail. So it's important to wait. It's very important to wait for the pattern to complete. Because you don't you can let me you can have a pattern that is forming, right? So this might look like the left shoulder, this might look like the head, right? And then it seems okay, okay. And then it looks like it's forming the right shoulder. You don't want to be selling to saying, okay, this pattern is head and shoulder when it closes below. Because the market can just do like this 
and then this pattern is negated, right? You know, I've drawn a lot of scribbles, but I hope you kind of see the point of what I was trying to explain. Now, let me go back to this. So you want to confirm, you want to wait for the pattern to confirm, and once you have that pattern as confirmed, then, and the confirmation of the pattern is only if the market breaks. That means it moves below the neckline and closes below, you know, it's not, it, you can have, you can have this as your neckline, right? We can have this now, right? This, let's call this line X. We can have this as our neckline. And this is the structure. If price, if this is a daily chart, and within the day, price moves, you know, lower, low like this, you know, the candle, the daily candle moves down um, below the neckline. That is not a close. It's it's not that's not a break. It would only be a break if the day closes and the candle forms and closes below this neckline. Then this is a close. But because in some cases you can have a situation where the market will pull back and just you know form this week and then go back up and form something like a bullish spin back, right? So you, if you have traded, you know what I'm saying. Um, you can have the market just come down, break below support, and give a false break, and then form a close, uh, form a bullish spin back and go back up. So this is the reason why we wait for price to close the thing below the neckline. And then we can now start looking to sell the price, the market down to our measured objective. So um, entry, how do we enter the trade? Now, once we have confirmed that price has broken the neckline, that means a daily close. If it's a, if the head and shoulder pattern forms and you know it's you're looking at the head and shoulder pattern, you identify the pattern in the four hour chart. Then you need a four hour, um, a four hour candle close. So you need one candle for that is four hours uh, to close below the neckline. You need to see that this supports here, the neckline supports has been respecting that particular um, level. And then if you have a daily close below the neckline, then you have a confirmation that the pattern is complete. Now, once the pattern is complete, we look to pull the trigger. And that is where we now look for, okay, where do we enter the market? So once we have that the pattern is complete, let's see, for example, this is our close, our close candle below the neckline here. Then what we would look to do, there are two options, two ways you can enter. The first option would be so once this candle close and the next one opens, right, you sell. So you place a sell to it. Once this candle has closed, you place a sell um, order, an instant sell order to sell the market. Once the market, once that candle closes, you place your sell and then you enter at this position. So you enter exactly where the next candle open, you know, or whereabouts where you meet it. The next option, um, would be to wait for the market to retest the neckline. But here's the thing, in most cases, the market tend to, once a, usually when a level is broken, the market sometimes, you know, not all the times, and sometimes may not do it instantly, but the market tends to retest previous levels. So you see how this points, I mean, here you see how price held above, that, that level held price, the same level again held price, and so when the market eventually breaks below here, right, so the market has broken below and confirmed our head and shoulder pattern, what we look to do then, the first option, like I said, is to buy instantly at the next candle open. The other option will be to wait for the market to come back and retest this level. So what we could then see is then the markets could go down and then come back up to retest this level, so you could go down, come back up, test this level before heading to the destination, right? So the 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 other option, the second entry choice, is to sell on a retest. And then this this one, you know, it's it's nice, you know, in terms of risk to reward because you're moving 
you're going to be entering closer to the neckline. So what that means is if the market has closed, you know, you can have one candle, another candle before going back up to retest the neckline. What that will do for you then is or what you could then do is place a sell, you know, a sell um, limit order. So you place a sell limit order on your MT4 to sell the market when, whenever the price comes back to this level. So you place a sell limit order, a pending order to sell, and then when the price comes to that level, your trade is triggered. Now, where do you place your stop loss? Your stop loss, ideally, they are also um, so very um, variance on where you can choose to place your stop loss. Now, the first one will be to the first and the most ideal place to place your stop loss conservatively would be above the left, the right shoulder's height. So this is the right shoulder. So this is left shoulder, this is head, and this is right shoulder. So above the high of this right shoulder, right, above this high, so you can just give like 10 pips above the high, and then place your stop loss, take that value as your stop loss, and then that would be your, that would be your risk, right? So the distance and in terms, the distance in terms of pips from the tip of the left shoulder, right shoulder to your entry would be the risk you are taking on that trade. So depending on the loyal size you're using, that would vary in dollar sign. So that is the first way to place your to to place your stop loss. The second option, which is more aggressive, but also you know can be risky, is where you place your stop loss you know, above this neckline. So now, expectedly, this neckline is supposed to be support, right? So that means next time price comes back to it, it should hold. So you can now choose to probably place your stop loss above this support, right? So this is support, you can just place it above the support. Now, this gives the, in this case, you'll be risking less, right? So you'll be risking less in terms of dollar sign. But what could happen in some cases is, the market could do something like this, you know, where the market for, comes back up, you know. Um, okay, let me, the market has broken, then comes back to retest. So this is our horizontal line. So the market can, you know, come back to retest, break above, and then start heading lower. So in this case, if your stop loss is too close to the neckline, you can have a situation where the market takes you out and then go your way. So either way, they both, they both have advantage and disadvantage. Disadvantage of the first one is you're risking more, but you are safer in terms of as long as the structure is, um, you know, as long as the market respects the structure, then you are likely to stay in the trade. But if you're being too aggressive, you risk, you're risking less, and if the market goes against you, you know, you have very little to lose or very uh, much less to, to risk. Then, but the disadvantage is the market can take you out and then go the direction intended. Now, the same concept that we just talked about in this head and shoulder um, is the same concept that applies to the inverse head and shoulder. The only, the only difference is in this case, now the market is heading lower right and then the market forms a left shoulder which is this forms a head and forms a right shoulder which is you know the idea this is this is what it shows what the what the head and shoulder pattern tells us is this the market the momentum of the market has been looking heading down now we know nothing lasts forever so when the market then is when the when the market, when a particular trend is weakening or is getting fired, you know you can probably see you would, not probably you can see that from the price, right? If you understand technicals, and head and shoulder is one of those patterns that show. It's not it does the market doesn't always form head and shoulder to be as a reversal. But head and shoulder is one of the key reversal patterns. Now, so what happens is you can see the market is in this at in, at this stage. Right, so at this stage, I mean, at this stage, normally you feel okay. This is still the continuation of the downtrend. When the market makes a move 
to this level, you'll be like, okay, and then mix this move. You'll be like, okay, this is still the continuation of the downtrend. It's just normal retracement. But when there will be a challenge is if the market fails to take out this head. Now, the height of the left shoulder and the right shoulder does not need to be even. So it means just because the right shoulder, the, just because the left shoulder stops here doesn't mean the left, right shoulder should stop there for it to be valid. The right shoulder can, can, can come up. As long as it is not higher than the head, right, this is still a valid head and shoulder pattern, which if completed, that means if price breaks above, right, then we have a, a pattern in our hands. So you can now see how this now turns from a downtrend, and then you can now see it's now making higher lows and higher lows. It has making lower highs, sorry, lower lows and lower highs here. Yeah? And then this pattern, the market starts mixing, um, uh, making higher lows and higher highs. Also, another thing to point out too is the fact that the neckline doesn't always need to be, a head and shoulder pattern doesn't always have to be a horizontal neckline. So for example, you can have, let's say this is my trend line. So the market is heading higher, you know, it has been heading higher for a while along this trend line. What we can then have then is a situation where the markets now start doing something like this. And then make a, a pattern like this. So in this case, you can see that our head and shoulder partner would be like this. This is where our neckline would be, right? This is where our neckline would be. Our neckline is not horizontal in this case. So in this case, this is horizontal. Don't mind my line. This is supposed to be a straight line, right? But we can also have the pattern from, in this case, so where we have our left shoulder, our head, and then we can now have, so let's do this, we can now have our right shoulder. And this is also a valid head and shoulder pattern. We treat it the same way. Once the market breaks this neckline, we look to treat the same distance. The distance between here, H, let's call it H. The distance from the top of the head to the um, um, neckline. We just measure that. So just measure where does that fall here, and then we treat it down to the measured objective. Now let's go to the chat and look at some uh, look at some examples. If you have questions, drop them in the chat. Okay. So um, now the, the disadvantage of this, or one of the disadvantage, or the, not necessarily disadvantage, yeah, the cons is that. Because it's a pattern that takes time to form, you know, and it you know, it requires that you are able to identify it. Um, you know, you don't see several trading opportunities uh, because it usually forms on the higher time frame. When you're trading head and shoulder pattern, you want to at least be looking uh, at the head and shoulder pattern on at least four hour chart. So we're looking at the four hour chart or uh, not more than the uh, not not less than the four hour chart. When it's in between the four hour chart, uh, the daily candles, the, the weekly candles, or the weekly chart, it's a valid place to be looking for structures like that. So let's go to, um, there's one that is currently for me, so I said I was going to give you trade ideas, um, I give up, so let me use that. So they actually, so, so USDCHF, I actually pointed this one out to our traders in uh, traders who are um, already trading with us on the Telegram channel before it happened. So uh, before the market even did that, I pointed it out. So if you look at this, right, you may not necessarily. It takes at at some point it, it, when you get better at this, you get you know you start identifying these patterns in the market. But looking at this, this is you know you could see that the market is in a downtrend. So obviously the market has been you know heading lower, you know heading lower. Now the market never heads lower forever. Forever, at some point it's going to reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let me just um, play up everything on the screen. So that we have uh, 
Um, we have a yeah, we move lines. Let's have a fresh chart to look at. Now, so you're seeing the markets make this move, higher highs and lower highs and lower lows, heading lower, so the market's in a downtrend. And then look at what, what price action is doing here. So if we look at this, the market is going down, right? And then it came down, make a low. Now this low, normal, it came back, make it, and they made another low. Now this is fine, you know, normally like um, this is not, this is a normal, the healthy way the market moves. Until the market came back up and we tested, you know, the same area, the same level, and then made pull back down. Now, ideally, in a downtrend, you want to see this market pull back, come back below, to stick out this low, and start heading lower. But the market then turn around. So at this point, right, let me bring up my horizontal line. Let me draw the trend line. So if I do this, you could see the neckline. So this line is our neckline. You can see that this is our left shoulder. You can see that this is our head. Then you can see, then, this is the next, so the market came back, we tested the next line, made our right shoulder. So I pointed this out, why the price was still below here. That this is a pattern I'm looking to trade. I pointed, look, you should look to enter um, this trade if the market closes above this um, neckline on the daily candle. So you can see here, this candle closes well above it on the daily time frame. And that's, so in this case, for the first entry pattern, you will look at entry um, style, you look to place your trade, immediately this candle closes, which is this next candle. So if you have placed your trade at this next candle, you will be up already now by some few, uh, couple of pips, so about 20, about 40 pips or so. And then the second option would be to wait for a retest. So this pattern is still very, very valid. I haven't even... Um, I haven't even taken a trade on this pattern simply because I'm waiting for a retest, right? So the market has pulled up. If it doesn't retest, but well, that's fine. But this is a head and shoulder pattern. Now let me let me um, run it for you so you can uh, see it um, clearly. So this would be. I hope you can see my screen. Okay, so I hope you can all see my screen now. Now, so you can see the, this is the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. So if I do this, uh, this would just, I want to put, draw on my chart. So I'll have this. Now, this one is actually an inverse head and shoulder. They're both the same. They just, all the difference is just that in one it is the market it's one is the bullish reversal pattern why one is the bearish reversal pattern right okay so i hope you see that so this this spells it out properly so you have the left shoulder the head the right shoulder now it doesn't have to be clean you know it doesn't need to be you know sometimes the the, the shoulders so or the left shoulder or the right shoulder, it may not, you know, there might be several left shoulders. So what, what I mean is this, let me go back to my drawing. So you can have a situation where, um, let me take off this. So you can have a situation where you, you have something like this. So the market is in an uptrend, right? Okay, so you, uh, you have the market is in an uptrend, 
a defined uptrend, and then then makes the left shoulder. You know, it can do this, right? And then come back here. Now, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, it doesn't need to be one straight form. What the idea is, you could, if you want to see that, okay, the head, right? The there's the market made a low, or this area here, the market made a low price or a, a lower high, and then the head, which is supposed to be higher than both the left and the right shoulder. You can see that the left shoulder is not even to the right shoulder. The point is the respect neckline, right? And then this is, you know, you need to have this come back here, touch here, and then this is a valid head and shoulder pattern, right? So it can, what I mean is just, you know, you can have heads, this is also, you know, a valid head and shoulder pattern. The idea is this is the left shoulder, this is the right shoulder, or this whole area is the right shoulder, and this is the head. The point is, both the left and the right shoulder need to be lower than the head, and then they need to respect the neckline such that when the neckline is broken, we can now look to take advantage of the trend, the change in direction. So in this case, um, if you if you are trading, you can look put, take this trade the same way I'm looking to trade it, right? So I have my pending sell um, buy limit, sorry, I have my pending buy limit order, and my entry is going to be at 89.20, so 0.89.20, which is the neckline. So I'm expecting, you know, price to come back and retest this level. Now price may never do that, you know, price may just from okay. To be just from here and head up to our measured objective. So our measured objective would be the length of this. So this is um 162 pips. We are looking at 162 pips, and I mean we should be targeting 162 pips. And 162 pips comes at here. Yeah. Let me draw this. So this is the target for this street. Here is the target for this street. Now you can choose to, you know, buy and try to take profits at this level. I, ideally, I wouldn't do that because it is already far gone. Because if I'm looking to buy here, the best place to place my stop loss, you know, is down here below the right shoulder, you know, or even here. You can choose to do that. But ideally, out the best place to place here because this is even the next swing low. Is below this right shoulder, so I'll be risking, you know, I'll be risking more to make little. <clears throat> so, by, but by allowing the price to come down to me, you know, come down, it will give me a good risk to reward ratio, such that if I'm buying here, I'll be risking this little to make all of this. So I'll be risking about say 80 pips to make about 160 pips, which is about a 2 to 1. So that is a much, much better risk to reward. So my, for this trade, I'm looking to, you know, come down for the price to pull back, take me in, um, taking, my, taking my buy limit order, and then I'll look to pull back to ride the trend back up. And this current level here is, um, you know, if, I, if you pull up a trend line, we could see that this is so we could have the price may find um would could find some resistance here which could then force price back down you know to this level and then we could see the market start heading higher to break back this down but this the price could eventually could actually just go straight up and continue up to the target which is also fine right Another one, another like, defined example would be Euro USD. So there is also a pattern formation of sorts of, of the sort on the Euro USD, which I um, which is actually some currently in play. Okay, you can see I this is um, how I drafted it out and I sent it to the Telegram channel to those who are who are on it. You would know that I pointed this trade out. Now I pointed this trade out. While price was still here, 
that this is the potential head and shoulder. You can see how the price made the left shoulder, right? And then you can see how the right price made the head here. Yeah, this is left shoulder, this is the head, and this is the right shoulder, and this is the neckline. You see, bounce on the neckline, bounce on the next neckline. So the head is the two point in the head is made from bounces from the neckline. And then now, in this case now, we have the price is that it's just breaking, unlike the one for Euro CH, um, US CHF. Here, yeah, price has broken below the neckline, and it's also still close to being around the neckline. So it, closed, it broke below it yesterday, just about broke below it yesterday. And then today, you can see how price is heading in the direction. So if I move to lower to like the four hour chart, you would see how price head back towards the next line. You can see, okay, let me show this. You see how price head back towards the next line. You know, close market close below on the daily, head back towards the next line, and then it's heading downward. Now you can also look to pull this trade, uh, pull trigger on this trade, uh, which is something, although I am on this trade already. So I've been selling um, from the close, so from yesterday's close and today's um, reversal, I have been trading this neckline and this is where the major objective falls. So based on the distance between the head and the neckline, where we are targeting is also, is here at 171.61 um, 1, area. So this is yeah, it still has a long way to go. So what you can do too, if you're looking to trade this, is maybe wait for a retest right to um, the back side of this trend or this neckline, which is also support. And then look to sell back down to here. Or you can as well just sell from here, whichever you wish or uh, whichever you wish to do or you want to re uh, be, uh, place your stop loss properly. So ideally your stop loss would be, ideally your stop loss would be um, above the right shoulder. So which is yes, you want to have your stop loss above the right shoulder. And then your measures objective where you should looking to take profits is around 1761. Now it doesn't always have, you know, you do, it doesn't have to get to the objective, you know, you might have seen uh, if, you, if the price has moved down in your favor all the way down, you can, you know, close some profits, you know, or move your stop loss, um, adjust your stop loss or close out the position. But we tend to see price, this is the measured objective, come down back to around this area. And so that is how you deal with the, this is how you treat the head and shoulder pattern. It's actually very interesting or very, very um, powerful. Um, reversal patterns, um, trading and um, chart pattern, which if you understand, you would be able to, you able to spot these reversals and how to take advantage of these patterns in the market. So now it will be time for your questions, if you have any, and I'll do my best to make sure I give you a satisfying answer.